As we get closer and closer to the 2024 NFL Draft, I love to talk about different players, different quarterbacks, different stories, and all that good stuff. There's also plenty of people who like to make negative comments on my YouTube videos about how I'm negative or how I'm too critical of players. Today we're going to do a video that is both satire and real, as we're going to talk about the biggest flaw from every big time quarterback draft prospect. This will basically be a half glass empty approach to the 2024 quarterback class, as we're going to go through each and every big time quarterback prospect and talk about the one thing that they struggle with most. But before we get started, if you're a big college football or draft fan, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll have plenty of content coming your way. And also be sure to leave a like if you want to support today's video. Let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I can cover next. And now let's get started and talk about the biggest flaw for every 2024 quarterback draft prospect. All right, so I'm actually really excited for this one. And the first quarterback we're going to preview is Sam Hartman. After being the backup to Will Greer in high school, Sam Hartman would arrive at Wake Forest with very little fanfare. By the end of it, he had become one of the best quarterbacks in school history and transferred to Notre Dame for his final season. After an up and down season, he is now considered a late round NFL draft prospect. His biggest weakness comes down to how he throws the football. His red flag is his arm. His biggest problem is how he throws the football, as scouts have talked about his lack of consistency for a few years at Wake Forest and now at Notre Dame. He has some games where his arm looks incredible and some where he doesn't know what the heck he's doing. It mostly comes down to weakness in his arm, it seems, as he doesn't have a very strong arm and that's created a few problems with accuracies, especially on the run. He has a tendency to underthrow or overthrow receivers and he also threw quite a few interceptions. His footwork also isn't great either, also making his arm easier to manipulate. In all, he just doesn't have an NFL arm, and in my opinion, he was also really soft in terms of taking hits. The next guy we need to talk about is another transfer, and that is Devin Leary. Coming out of high school, Leary was a four-star recruit, and originally decided to go to NC State. After a pretty good couple seasons there, he looked like a legit NFL draft prospect. Eventually, he would transfer to Kentucky for his final season of eligibility, and he is an older quarterback. His main issue is his age, but the red flag we're going to talk about is consistency. According to Daniel Jeremiah at NFL.com, he regressed significantly since his time with the Wolfpack. I don't really think it has that much to do with him going from the ACC to the SEC, but he never really seems to be consistent. One day he'll make the perfect throw that makes everybody go wow, and the next time he'll overthrow at 10 yards or throw it out of bounds. He's not super consistent, and he also relied too much on design routes in college. He'd stare down and throw to his number one player, instead of going through his progressions and reads, which contributed to a lack of consistency when the offense changed. He doesn't have too much in-game rhythm, he seemingly is super impatient, and overall he just really regressed last year at Kentucky. Maybe it's partially the system, maybe it's partially he wasn't that good, maybe it's a ton of factors, but honestly I'm not really that sold on Devin Leary and I don't think he's even going to get drafted. The next guy we need to talk about is Spencer Rattler. After becoming a prodigy quarterback out of Pinnacle High School in Arizona, Rattler was the number one quarterback in the class of 2019 and would sit behind Jalen Hurts before he took over in 2020 and 2021. He was solid there and had his moments, but he was eventually benched in favor of Caleb Williams and then would start two years at South Carolina where he was up and down. That's why his main red flag is inconsistency. Early on in his career, he really struggled to read defenses and with Oklahoma, he typically crumbled under the pressure. When he transferred to South Carolina, he still had moments where his play was dictated by the amount of stress and pressure he faced. The one exception is probably that Tennessee game in 2022. He has a tendency to abandon his footwork when games get tight, and when defenders are closing in, he's typically off the mark and has had a turnover problem. He has all the physical tools and talent necessary to be an NFL quarterback, but honestly there's something a little bit off mentally, and while I still think he'll be a day two or day three pick, he has been inconsistent, and that's my red flag with him. The next guy we need to talk about is Austin Reed. But his big red flag is his arm. According to scouts, in a more mechanical sense, his throwing motion is long and he has a low release point. This means that defensive linemen have a higher chance of batting down his passes, and that is not good for the NFL. His release is actually the main reason he falls in this year's draft class, especially considered he's put up huge numbers and actually has excellent pocket awareness. It takes him a lot longer to throw the ball from start to finish than the other quarterbacks, and this both affects deep ball accuracy and simplifies the offense for him. He does a lot more short and simple passes, which could work out at Western Kentucky, but likely won't work in the NFL. Gunslingers like Austin don't typically work out unless they have super strong arms, and that's something I don't know if he can really fix. That's his red flag. My oh my, am I going to get a lot of flag for this one, but the biggest red flag that comes to mind for me for JJ McCarthy is the fact that he was a game manager at times. While some think McCarthy was truly the best quarterback to ever walk this earth, others see the fact that he only had one touchdown in the month of November and was at times routinely bailed out by their incredible offensive line and incredible running game. I wish I would have seen a little bit more of McCarthy under pressure, 
and when more of the offense was totally in his hands, but that's just me. There's gonna be a lot of people who disagree with that one. McCarthy's biggest weakness going into this year's draft has nothing to do with his physical or mental traits though. It has everything to do with the offense he ran at Michigan. Coach Harbaugh really didn't ask him to do that much. He told him to make smart, simple plays, which really helped build his confidence and help Michigan succeed. He didn't have to do anything crazy to win. While he did show he could make plenty of throws 10, 15, or more yards down the field, he didn't have to do it a whole lot, which in my opinion is his biggest red flag. We didn't see a ton of those crazy passes, we didn't see a ton of complex offense, and we really don't know what it's like for him to be the number one focal point of the offense. He managed the offense perfectly and has all the physical traits to do well in the NFL, but that in my opinion is the only thing that scares me. I think he'll be pretty good, but he'll have to get in the right system and go to the right team or else he could be in big trouble. That's just my opinion though, and I'm sure many will disagree down below. The next guy we're to talk about is Bo Nix. The biggest red flag with him is his age. Nix honestly brings a lot to the table. He was a five-star recruit in the class of 2019, was a five-year starter in both the SEC and the Pac-12, and has a ton of starting experience for big-time programs and pretty good coaches. The only downside to that is the fact that he spent a lot of time in college football. It means he'll be one of the older quarterbacks in this year's draft class, and he's set to be 24 as a rookie. His rookie contract will expire when he's around 28 or 29 years old, and while some think he could be a late or mid first round pick, he's really going to have to develop quickly for a team to get a good return on investment. If he does in fact go in that late first round or second round, it means that scouts view him as a developmental prospect instead of a guy who can start right away, and that right there has its problems because he already is pretty old. I personally think Bo Nix actually has a lot of potential, but his age may not help him out here. We'll have to wait and see though, because as we found out, that stuff doesn't matter as much in the NFL as it does in the NBA. Don't worry, we still have a couple more quarterbacks to go, as the next thing we're going to talk about is Jaden Daniels. The biggest thing that worries people is either his health or his frame. Jaden Daniels' biggest issue heading into the NFL is definitely his frame in my opinion. He could be too small to handle hits at his size, and if he gets a bad offensive line like Sam Howell had, he could get absolutely destroyed, which is not good. There are legitimate worries about how he'll handle getting tackled and the beating it takes to be an NFL quarterback, but the guy has great physical traits, won the Heisman, and mentally seems super sharp. Everything really fits with him, but we'll have to really wait and see. He took a ton of huge hits at LSU, as I remember pretty much each and every week he was either clothesline or completely leveled to the ground. It just takes one bad injury to be done, and I really hope that Jaden Daniels does not go down as a case of a player who could not stay healthy. We'll see what an NFL strength and conditioning program can also do to him. The next guy I want to talk about is Drake May. The biggest red flag that comes to mind with him is inexperience. His biggest flaw in my opinion is that he's just a redshirt sophomore and has seemed to struggle against more complex defenses that have been thrown his way. Most good defenses in the NFL are pretty complex with multiple moving parts and May hasn't had a ton of time to deal with that. He is shown to be inconsistent in identifying pass rushers or drop back defenders in the college ranks which could become a real problem in the NFL until he learns. On top of this, his inexperience leads him to throw some passes that really should not have been thrown. His timing on certain routes is off, which turns into the ball going to the front or behind of the receiver. He also gets noticeably uncomfortable once his first or second read goes away, meaning he isn't used to working on his own when the play breaks down. I also wasn't in love with him in terms of him elevating his game when the lights were the brightest, but maybe I'm being overly critical of May. He's supposed to go number two for a reason and we'll have to wait and see how he does. We still have four more quarterbacks to go, and the first one we're going to talk about is Joe Milton. The biggest problem with him is his accuracy. Joe Milton has a cannon for an arm. He's probably a top five arm in the NFL today if he was playing, but it doesn't mean he knows how to use it. This is one thing that people have been talking about for years. He loves the deep ball and it can be dangerous, but just because he can put the ball downfield doesn't mean he has the touch or the accuracy to do it in the NFL. He completed less than 39% of his throws further than 10 yards downfield, which for a guy who has a Patrick Mahomes or a Josh Allen level arm, not being able to make those throws is very disappointing and concerning. NFL.com even calls his lack of ball placement disturbing. Deep balls off the mark make him a prime candidate for the arm punt, which basically is just a really long interception. While his arm talent will probably get him drafted, he has serious work to do on his touch if he could ever become a viable NFL quarterback. And that's not even mentioning his age, his accuracy issues, or the fact he never really got that much better during his college career. Up next, we're going to talk about Michael Pratt, whose biggest problem is probably his athleticism. Coming out of Florida, Michael Pratt was just a three-star recruit. His next few seasons were great, which culminated in them beating USC and him getting attention to be a Power 5 transfer. While many scouts are intrigued with his ability to play in and win big games, he still doesn't have the arm that scouts are looking for, and he also doesn't have the athleticism. He's supposed to go in the middle of the 2024 NFL Draft, 
And while he may have the intelligence and some of the intangibles, keep plays going, or have the athleticism necessary to be an NFL quarterback. That is absolutely no knock on him, but there's a difference between being a backup or a low-level starter compared to a franchise player. He may just not have that, and that's something he can't really control, but I do think Pratt mentally has the ability to do really well. The second to last guy we're to talk about is Michael Penix Jr. I debated putting health and age, but honestly, health is much more of a concern. After being a three-star recruit out of high school, Michael Penix Jr. was developed by Kalen DeBoer at Indiana, and after having a terrific 2020 season, Penix actually got a decent amount of NFL hype. Unfortunately, his 2021 season was absolutely terrible, and that was because of injuries. He had four straight seasons where he was hurt and suffered a season-ending injury, and somehow that never happened while he was at Washington. With DeBoer back at Washington, Penix led them to two straight 10-plus win seasons, and even a college football playoff berth and a number two finish in the Heisman Trophy. He has a cannon for an arm, is extremely athletic, seems to be really smart, is very accurate, and has everything you could want in a big time quarterback. The problem is though, will his knees be able to hold up, and he'll be just as old as Bo Nix or Joe Milton. Those are two major red flags, as he's probably one knee injury away from being done for good. While Penix Jr. has an incredible amount of hype, and he's someone I'm rooting for, his health is a big red flag. Finally, we get to the last guy on the list, and that is future number one overall pick, Caleb Williams. I debated going back and forth between him being a hero ball player and his attitude. I kind of decided it's pretty much the same thing, as the biggest issue with Caleb Williams is his personality. Some people think he has a poor personality due to him doing things like crying at the end of the season, or the way he left Oklahoma for USC, but that's not a super massive issue. The real issue with him is his tendency to do too much. There are some scouts that are concerned that he purposely tries to avoid the easy six yard pitch and catch to force a home run ball that shouldn't have been thrown and would be intercepted in the NFL. This creates some poor anticipation and mistakes on his part, and misses on deep balls he has the arm to make, but just doesn't. He needs to learn to be okay with taking easy passes, throwing the ball away, or not doing too much. While I do have some issues with the attitude stuff, I think it'll get straightened out pretty quickly in the NFL, and if not, he'll get completely exposed. So yeah, today we did a hater's guide to the 2024 NFL Draft, and talked about the biggest problem or red flag with each and every quarterback prospect. Hopefully I wasn't too negative for some of you YouTube viewers out there, but let me know down below. Who is your favorite quarterback for this year's draft class? What are your concerns for the top prospects? And what video topic should I do next? Be sure to let me know down below. Leave a like if you want to support today's video. Subscribe if you're new. And check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace.